Hey guys, let's go and find our dear Black Adder, who I guess is about to receive an important mission, the Gainsborough mission. So uh, I read that Gainsborough was a famous painter who painted beautiful landscapes and portraits during the 18th century. So I'm a bit curious to see where this will take us. Let's go. <coughs> What do you want, darling? <laughs> It's Captain, darling, to you. Get okay, this joke is like Italian cuisine. It's very simple, but it's delicious and perfect. General Melchett wants to see you about a highly important secret mission. What's going on, darling? Wow. I guess that when this guy comes to you with a twinkle in his eyes and says he's got a great mission for you, then I said that Black Adder is the perfect man to do the right thing, run for his dear life. Captain Black Adder, see you, sir. Ah, excellent. Just a short back and side there, I think. Uh, yes, that's Corporal Black, sir. Captain Black Adder is here about the other matter, sir, the secret matter. Ah, yes, the special mission. Eddie's back at him. Now, what I'm about to tell you is absolutely tip-top secret. Is that clear? It is, sir. Now, I've compiled a list of those with security clearance. Have you got it, darling? Yes, sir. The darling stuff is getting better and better at every occurrence. So this kind of stuff is totally in my alley. Read it, please. It's top security, sir. I think that's all the captain needs to know. Don't search. Let's hear the list in full. Very well, sir. List of personnel cleared for mission Gainsborough, as dictated by General C. H. Melchett. You and me, darling, obviously. <laughs> Field Marshal Haig, Field Marshal Haig's wife, all Field Marshal Haig's wife's friends, their families, their family servants, their family servants' tennis partners, and some chap I bumped into in the mess the other day called Bernard. So Haig, uh, I know that this man comes from a prosperous family, that he was particularly fond on golf and that he was knighted after the war, but he's one of the most controversial commanders of this conflict. He was nicknamed the Butcher of the Sun during the war and he was criticized by many historians because he was perceived Uh, to be responsible for excessive massacres of troops. And uh, one famous line I remember about him is from Winston Churchill. He's brilliant, yes, right up the height of his boots, which is brutal. <laughs> But something I want to add about him as well is that somebody very rightfully put it up in my comments and you know if we want to make the portrait of a man we have to tell the whole stuff is that after he left active service he devoted himself and the rest of his life to veterans traveling throughout the British Empire to defend or promote their interests as most of them after the war were uh, crippled they could not work anymore and so it was hard for them just to make a living and on top of that many of them suffered unknown diseases mental diseases ptsd uh, what we were calling shell shocks and that we would not understand yet so yeah it's a complex figure but as every man i'd say it's maximum security is that clear <laughs> quite clear sir only myself and the rest of the english-speaking world is to know <laughs> good man now Field Marshal Haig has formulated a brilliant new tactical plan to ensure final victory in the field. Ah. Would this brilliant plan involve us climbing out of our trenches and walking very slowly towards the enemy, sir? <laughs> How could you possibly know that, Blackadder? It's classified information. <laughs> It's the same. Yes, I'd seen that extract in advanced World War War tactics, but every time I see it, it's... Even better. Same plan that we used last time, and the 17 times before that. <laughs> it, it, exactly! And that is what is so brilliant about it. It will catch the watchful Hun totally off guard. Doing precisely what we've done 18 times before is exactly the last thing they'll expect us to do this time. <laughs> There is, however, one small problem. 
that everyone always gets slaughtered in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> That's right! It's funny because I binged the first season of Black Adder yesterday and what a contrast to the first character. Rowan Atkinson really shifted his game to more sarcasm and it fit particularly well with the time and the context of this season. And yes, going in at first into German machine gun fire with questionable artillery preparation has mixed results. And to be fair, it's often the middle ranking officers who took the most casualties like captains and lieutenants because they often would be the first one to get out of the trenches. And Field Marshal Haig is worried that this may be depressing the men attached. <laughs> so, he's looking to find a way to cheer them up. Well, his resignation and suicide would seem the obvious. <laughs> Interesting thought. Make a note of it, darling. <laughs> Take a look at this. I'm sure you know it. King and Country. Ah, yes. Without question, my favorite magazine. Soft, strong, and thoroughly absorbent. <laughs> it's wonderfully provocative. And there's something even a bit punk about it when I see it now. Drop old Bergetta. I thought it would be right up your alley. <laughs> Field Marshal Haig's plan is this. To commission a man to do an especially stirring painting for the cover of the next issue. So as to really inspire the men for the final push. What I want you to do, Black Adam, is to labor night and day to find a first-rate artist from amongst your men. Impossible, sir. I know from long experience that my men have all the artistic talent of a cluster of colorblind hedgehogs <laughs> in a bag. Mm. Well, that's a bit of a blur. We needed a man to leave the trenches immediately. Leave the trenches? Mm -hmm. Yes. I wonder... If you've enjoyed, as I have, sir, that marvellous painting in the National Portrait Gallery, Bag Interior, by the Colourblind Hedgehog Workshop of Siena. I'm sorry, are you saying you can find us a man? I think I can, and might I suggest, sir, that having left the trenches, it might be a good idea to post our man to Paris in order to soak up a little of the artistic atmosphere, perhaps even... Yeah, that's a great idea to go at Montmartre and find a bit of creativity and inspiration there. Nice one, Black Hatter. Tahiti, I don't know. <laughs> so, Even better. Just to produce a real masterpiece. Yes, yes, but can you find the man? Now I know I can, sir. Before you can say sunflowers, I'll have Vincent van Gogh standing before you. <laughs> The sound of the bird makes me think of a movie where a soldier hears a bird and wants to draw it and for a moment he seems to forget where he is, just stick his head out of the trench to see the bird like a sign of life in the middle of nowhere and of nature and is shot right in the right in the head and dies but i don't remember what movie it is i don't know if it's a french one or yeah if you know don't hesitate to let me know in the comment guys no no don't, don't stop sir it's coming it's definitely coming i yeah. <laughs> i just wonder whether two socks and a hand grenade is really the sort of thing the covers of king and country are made of they will be when I've painted them being shoved up the Kaiser's backside. <laughs> ah, now, now this is interesting. What is? Well, Private Baldrick is obviously a bit of an impressionist. The only decent impression he can do is of a man with no talent. <laughs> What's it called, Baldrick? The Vomiting Cavalier? <laughs> okay. That's something I want to research about King and Country. So I just did a bit of research about King and Country. And yes, it was a magazine, So, but I am not sure that it existed during World War I and it was actually distributed within the trenches. But I found something really, really interesting about it. So King and Country is also the name of a 1964 British film starring Dick Bogard. And the plot of the movie is very, very interesting. So um, it happens in Belgium in 1917. You have a young British soldier who is waiting for his trial he was arrested while fleeing from the front 
and is accused of desertion. It occurs at Passchendaele, a private whose name is Arthur Hemp is accused of desertion. And uh, Hemp had been a volunteer at the outbreak of the war and was the sole survivor of his company, but then decided to go for a walk. Uh, he had contemplated walking to his home in London from the front in Belgium. So actually, it's pretty obvious that uh, something is not right about him and he's kind of insane. So he's arrested by the MPs and sent back to his unit to face a court martial for desertion. And the guy who is appointed to defend him, so his name is Captain Hergraves, who's played by Dirk Bogard, is first impatient with these simple-minded soldiers, but comes to identify that this guy is actually suffering and you also have an unsympathetic doctor whose only solution is to prescribe a laxative to every kind of illness. And her grace at some point tries to persuade the court that uh, hemp is just suffering from shell shock. The guy is eventually found guilty and is shot. So I really don't know if there is some kind of connections between these two stuff but yeah I, I found this very I don't know I found it interesting and I wanted to talk to you about it uh, don't hesitate to let me know what you thought about it guys and as always have a nice day bye